How we doing everyone? Welcome back to the vlog. This is gonna be day number 16 in Texas and here's our current profit. We are up $8,327. Pretty crazy to think about that. That's a lot for a one-two game. We're in another one-two game for $500. I don't wanna keep you guys any longer. Let's jump right into the vlog. We're gonna hop right into it here. We look down at five forward diamonds in the cutoff. We're getting spicy with the suited connector to start it off here. Early position raises to $10 in the middle position player calls. You definitely wanna mix in some three bets with hands like this. So that's what I do. I three bet to $45. But to my surprise, we get immediately called by the button and both the other players now getting a really good price stick in the call as well. So not the result we were looking for right away, but we're going to have to deal with it going four ways to a flop, which is unreal. Six, three deuce with two clubs. We flop the stones, the nuts, the cojones, whatever you want to call it. That's the best possible hand right now. The action checks over to me and with three other players in the hand, we want to get value from pairs and draws. So that's what I do. I stick out a bet here of $55. What's really good is our hand doesn't block our opponents from having any of those hands. We don't block any clubs. We don't block any pocket pairs that they would have. So hopefully we'll get looked up in at least one spot here. The action is on the button. He decides to put his cards in the muck. Same does the early position. And unfortunately, same does the middle position. We don't get any action here after flopping the nuts on the first hand. But can't be complaining when the dealer puts out a flop like that. We're going to move right along to the next hand. Looking down now at ace, queen of clubs on the button straddle. There's an early position raise to $20 and the middle position player puts in the call. The action's going to fold all the way back over to me. Ace, queen suited is going to fall into that category where we want to put more money in the middle. So I make it $75 to go and the action gets to the original raiser in early position. He thinks about it for a little while before deciding to put in another raise and it's a sizable one here. It's $300. Middle position gets out of the way like I would expect. The action gets back to me. This is a really ugly spot for us here. Obviously, the early position is repping a hand like ace-king, aces, kings, and queens. Sometimes pocket jacks and even ace-queen suited. We have good removal for a lot of those hands with an ace and a queen in our hand, but the early position player started the hand with about $600, so we don't really have much fold equity in this spot. When players put in half their stack, they usually don't fold. A lot of times here, I would call a four bet here with ace-queen, especially in position, but I think you can make an exploit in low stakes cash games. Most of the time when players put in a four bet, it's gonna be at the very, very top of their range especially when he four bets this big if i put in the call the pot's gonna be six hundred dollars and he only has three hundred dollars left behind so i'm either gonna be going all in or folding in the end i decide to be disciplined and let my cards go in the moment it felt like the right fold and sure enough he shows us that he had ace king we are absolutely crushed nice hand to the early position player it's important to make exploits especially in low stakes cash when you're facing a bigger raise or you're playing a tighter player even if you're looking at a pre-flop chart that says ace queen should always call a four bet here sometimes you just got to go with your reads Moving on to the next one, King Queen offsuit in middle position. I raise it up to $15, and no surprise here, we get five callers, six ways to a flop here, which comes King High, which is really relieving for us. King 4 3 with two diamonds. We do have the Queen of Diamonds in our hand. It's going to be a very nice card to have on some particular runouts. When the action checks to me here, sitting with top pair, we're going to have the best hand a lot of the time. Not getting three bet pre flop, we're never going to be up against aces, kings, or ace, king. The only hands that we'd be beat by right now is pocket fours and pocket threes, but that is going to be unlikely. Sitting with most likely the best hand, I bet out for $25, and surprisingly, we only get looked up by one player in the cutoff. Going now to a turn card, which is the king of hearts. We improved a three of a kind, and I definitely think we have to bet again, but I don't think we need to go that big. We still need to get called by his straight draws, flush draws, and lower pocket pairs. If he had a hand like pocket eights or pocket sevens, it's going to be a great card for him to keep calling us down on because it makes it less likely that we're going to have a king in our hand. I don't want to choose a very big sizing. In fact, I go quite small here. I bet out for $40 here. I think it's going to get those lower pairs to put in the call on the turn here. So I bet out for $40 and he comes along for the ride. Sticks in the call off to the river card, which relieves our worries of anything possible because it's the king of spades. We have quads. We have the nuts. Unbelievable. Now we just need to figure out how much money we can make in this hand. When he calls us on the flop and turn, obviously he can have some missed flush draws and straight draws, but I think, like I said on the turn, he could have some pocket pairs like eight, seven, sixes. We could go for a block bet here to try to induce those draws to bluff, but I think on this board texture, it's a really under bluff spot. In his eyes, I'm never going to be folding pocket queens, pocket jacks, pocket aces, so. I don't think he's going to bluff if I bet really small, try to induce. So I think we're going to try to target the value portion of his range. Maybe he'll get sticky and call me if he has a hand like 5-4 suited or pocket pairs like I mentioned earlier. So 220 in the pot, we bet almost the size of that. $200 in the middle. We have quads. It doesn't get too much better than this, man. He thinks about it for a short while before putting in the call. We show him that we got the quads. And before mucking, he flashes us the ace and ace pocket aces he had what a cooler man nuts versus second nuts 
He slow played aces. What a run out for us. Running hot here at Poker House, and we are going to keep the hot streak going with pocket aces ourselves. Here we go. We're on the button. Early position raises to $15 in the middle position calls. Action is over to me. And we're going to be three betting here. I decide on a size of $50. In hindsight, I would prefer a size of $60 to $75. After all, we are in Texas and people don't like to click that fold button. So we want to get max value with our best hands. But the sizing doesn't really matter here because the player in early position four bets me to $100. That is a min raise. Back over to me. He only has about $200 behind. I could slow play and put in the call here, but I think that this is a very strong line and he's not going to fold. So I jam for $300 effective and he snap calls. I quickly let him know that I have the best hand. He does not look too happy about that. He shows us the ace king. We have that absolutely crushed. Go into a flop here, which is a little bit of a sweat. It's king nine four with two clubs. He has top pair now. Any king would give him the best hand. He also has a backdoor flush draw. So to the turn card. The queen of spades, it eliminates the backdoor flush opportunities. We're gonna have to dodge two outs here on the river. And the eight of spades is not one that he needs. We're gonna scoop in a $623 pot with pocket aces living life here at Poker House Dallas. Now we're gonna move on to a double board bomb pot that is quite interesting. Every dealer change here at Poker House is a double board hold'em bomb pot at the one two game. So here we go. Eight, seven of hearts. And here's what the two boards come down. 10, nine, eight with two hearts. We flop an open-ended straight flush draw in bottom pair. And the second board comes seven, seven, six. We have trips. What a monster hand. It's very rare that you're going to have something on both boards in these double board hold'em bomb pots. So I typically start off by putting on a small bet. I make it $25 to go and we get three callers. Hoping to hit one of our outs on the top board. And you could say we hit one of our outs. It's the six of hearts. We drill the straight flush, and even better, the bottom board comes a six. So we have the nuts on the top and the nuts on the bottom. I don't know what's going on, but this is absolutely unreal. Even better, the small line goes all in for $141. She's going to say goodbye to that money. The question is, do we want to call or raise here? I think calling is a perfect play because, like I said, we have both boards basically locked in. We cannot be beat, and I want to induce those other players to call behind. So I just slow play and stick in the call. But unfortunately, everybody else folds. And I quickly let her know that she's probably going to get scooped here. I show her the straight flush and full house. And sure enough, she's going to throw her cards into the muck. What an unreal hand. I've never played a bomb pot like that. Not the biggest pot in the world, but we will take it, man. $427 coming our way. You know when you just experience a different type of run good? That's what we're experiencing right now. Like, everything is happening in the right way for you. And we're gonna continue that run good. Ace, king, offsuit on the big blind. There's four limps to the small blind. He decides to pump it up to $30. That is not gonna be enough, sir. I make it $90. And the action folds around to the small blind. And sure enough, he puts it all in. Snap call from me. Everything is going my way today. We're gonna go off to a run out here. Now the run out doesn't come great for us. It's nine, six, four with two diamonds. Turn card three of spades and river card six of diamonds. I show him the ace king and he mucks his cards. The poker gods are on our side today, man. Just a quick little all in and call pre flop, and our stack is building. Quick announcement, guys I have been playing a lot online. If you guys are looking for somewhere to play, come play with me on Club GG 24 7 cash games and tournaments. Action is amazing. It's super fun if you're a beginner or if you're advanced. So click the link in the description. I hope I see you on the tables. The next one we look down at is pocket sevens here on the button straddle. The player under the gun raises it up to $20. The player on the small blind puts in the call. The action's on me. I think just calling here in position seeing a flop is the best play. We could be three betting a small portion of the time, but facing an under the gun raise, we definitely want to play a little bit tighter here. So I stick in the call and we're going to a flop, which is ace seven three. We flop middle set here. The run good has not stopped, guys. Small blind checks in the under the gun player now. Puts out a bet of $40. It's a relatively big bet compared to the size of the pot. About two thirds here. So I think playing a raise or a call is completely fine. I think against bigger sizings here, you want to favor a call just a little bit more. Since I'm in position on both players, I decide to just stick in the call and the small blind gets out of the way. Now we're going heads up to a turn card, which is the six of diamonds. Definitely makes the board a lot more dynamic. There's two flush draws and now five, four makes a straight. I don't expect the under the gun player to have five, four suited. If anything, that's going to favor me more than him, but he does not slow down. He goes for another big bet of $120. That's nearly the size of the pot. Now the question is, what do we do here? The board is extremely wet. We only lose to one hand basically, and that is two aces. Pocket aces would be top set. We could mix in some bluffs here with like eight, seven of diamonds, but I don't think I have nearly as many bluffs as I do value in the spot. We have pocket sevens, pocket sixes, pocket threes, five, four, ace seven suited, ace three suited, ace six suited. 
and 7-6 suitor. That's a lot of value, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be bluffing enough here with my combo draws. Sitting with middle set here on a very wet board, I do decide to go for a raise here. Not that you really need to be balanced in live poker, but sometimes it's an interesting concept to think about. And I definitely size up a little bit here, 3x to $365. The action's over to the under the gun player, and he's thinking about his decision here. He ends on a decision to put in the call. Now, this is a little bit scary here. He did open under the gun, meaning he definitely has pocket aces. Sure, he can have like ace queen of clubs, ace king of clubs, ace six suited, ace seven suited, but having two sevens in our hand is going to make ace seven a lot less likely. Obviously, with middle set here, I just want to see the board pair. I want to see a clean river. And that's not really what we get. It's the king of clubs. The front door flush draw comes in there, but that's about it. Obviously, he's never going to have pocket kings in this spot. Doesn't seem like we're going to get called by a worse hand here. We could try to bet small and get called by like ace three suited, ace six suited maybe ace-king, but I decided to just play a little bit passive. Something was tingling my spine on the turn. I check it back, and sure enough, he shows us top set. Pocket aces, man. What in the world? Set over set on the flop. I think if we got a clean river there, we probably would have put him all in for his last 600 or so dollars. Some say it's the worst feeling in poker, and I'm definitely gonna have to agree with them. Set over set, man. What are you gonna do? We're gonna move on. Here we are in the big blind with 9-7 of diamonds. It's two limbs to me. We're going to play aggressive with this one. I raise it up to $35. We get looked up by the early position and hijack players. So, out of position to a flop, which is queen, nine, three with two clubs. We flop middle pair here, but out of position to two other players, I'm definitely going to start with a check. So, that's what I do. The action, fortunately, checks around. So, we're going to get to see a turn card, which is the nine of spades. We drill trips here. Not a bad turn card for the good guys here. With two flush draws on board, we are definitely going to be betting here. We want to get called by all those draws, gut shots. I don't think either player will have a queen here. I assume they would probably bet the flop, but you never know. Maybe we'll get called by a hand like pocket eights or pocket tens. So I bet out for $40 and we only get looked up by the under the gun player. Going to a river card, please be a brick. And it is. It's the six of hearts. And now with $191 in the pot, it's pretty tough to think of a hand that we can get value from. So I don't want to choose too big of a sizing, maybe give my opponent a little bit of rope to bluff. I put out a bet of $75. The opponent starts stacking up his chips like he wants to put in the call. That's good news for us, and he eventually slides in the chips. We show him 9-7, and he flashes us a queen before mucking his card. So sure enough, he had top pair. We're going to scoop in a $336 pot, getting lucky on the turn. In the next one here, we look down at pocket nines. We're in the hijack with about $1,800 covering the entire table. The middle position player limps, and I'm going to raise it up to $20. We get three callers from the small blind, big blind, and middle position. So we're going four ways to a flop in position on all players. It'd be pretty nice if we could get the exact same flop from last time. And that's exactly what happens. It's queen, nine, three, rainbow. Middle set for us on the exact same board as last time. Pretty crazy stuff happening here. The action checks over to middle position, who decides to risk all $92 that they have in front of him. All in. There's no flush draws on board. Sure, there's a couple straight draws, but I think just putting in the call here, we have a very, very strong hand. So, that's what I do. Try to induce the other players to come along, but unfortunately, they do not. So, we're going to go off to the run. I assume my opponent is probably drawing dead. Sure enough, he shows queen, eight of spades. He has a few backdoor draws, hit a straight or flush. We're going to go off to a run out here. The turn now comes the eight of diamonds. It gives the opponent two outs to make a better full house. Any queen on the river would give him the best hand. The river card is the king of spades. He does not improve to a better full house. And we're going to scoop in a $264 pot. We are flying through this session like a breeze, man. The dealer pushes the pot my way, and I'm going to add that to my collection of chips. Now, this next one is a little bit interesting here. Sometimes here in Texas, players will put money on the button as it goes around the table. The money will start to stack up on the button, and whenever the button wins a hand, all that money goes to a tip for the dealer. There's $8 on it right now, and guess who's on the button? It's yours truly. And before the hand starts, the dealer says, now it's up to you, Gil. So, we are going to be three betting any two cards here, guys. We are doing it for the dealer. We're taking it down, and we look down at the Doyle Brunson. Ten deuce suited. It's an old favorite of mine when I was getting into poker. You heard what I said. We are going to be playing this one aggressively. Our early position player makes it $15 and hijacks six in the call. We're going to be three betting this one. I make it $70, hopefully to try to take it down now or get heads up and try and win it post-flop. And we're going to have to win it post-flop here because the early position player puts in the call. So we're going to have to do a little bit of battling here. The flop comes 10, 10, 9, rainbow. We flop trips 
We literally can't miss a flop today, man. We three bet 10 deuce and we flop trips. It's really not fair to the other players. We're going to continue with a small bet here like we would with a lot of our hands. So I bet out for $50 and he thinks that's a fair price and sticks in the call. This is unreal, dude. The turn card comes the eight of diamonds. Queen Jack now makes a straight, which would be the most obvious draw on the flop. But when he checks it to me, there's plenty other hands we can get value from. Now with the flush draw on board, I bet out for $130. The early position player waves the white flag and folds. And we are going to get that money to the dealer. And we show the table that we got lucky three betting the 10 deuce. It's always nice to let loose and have a little fun at the poker table. You know what I'm saying? In the next one here, we are on the button with King Jack offsuit. There's four limps. We are going to be putting more money in the middle. I make it $40 to go. And we actually only get one call this time. It's a miracle. And funny enough, it wasn't even one of the players that limped. It's the big blind who puts in the call. So we're going to go heads up in position to another flop. Dude, I can't make this up. Jack, Jack, nine, rainbow. We flop trips once again. The big blind checks it over to me. And again, I'm going to continue with a small bet on this flop. So I bet out for $25. And the big blind decides to come along and put in the 25. So off to a turn card, which is the three of spades. Puts a flush draw out there, but it's a pretty big brick for this board. He only has about 150 or so dollars left in his stack. So I think checking back here could be fine sometimes. I would prefer a smaller bet would set up a nicer jam on the river, but in the moment, I decided to go for a little bit of a slow play here and check back. River card now is the six of spades. It completes the backdoor flush drop, but I'm not really too worried about it, especially when he checks it over to me for a third time. And now I'm just going to put out a small bet, try and target a hand like maybe a nine, pocket eights, pocket sevens. So that's what I do. I bet out for $50, but unfortunately the big blind throws in his cards. That's a fold, not a huge pot, but just crazy that I flopped trips again, man. You know what I'm saying? A slight upgrade from King Jack off. We look down at King Queen offsuit here in the low jack. Under the gun races to $17 and middle position puts in the call. You guys know me. I like to play very aggressive with these three bets. Try and isolate and go heads up. So that's what I do. I make it $65. And we only get looked up by the under the gun player who was the initial raiser. This is the spot I was looking to be in in position to a flop, which comes 8-8 eight, eight, deuce rainbow. An absolute whiff for us, but I can't imagine this is going to hit the under the gun very well either. I've been trying to experiment with bigger bets on the flop. And I think if I had a hand like pocket nines, tens, jacks, maybe pocket queens, I would bet a little bit of a bigger size here to try and get protection from over cards. So when she checks it over to me, I'm going to do exactly that and bet out half pot for $75. She doesn't look too comfortable with this bet, which is great to see. And she eventually makes a decision to fold before showing ace king i did not expect her to fold that but that shows you what that bet can accomplish we were drawing to three outs versus that hand so great to see that one hit the muck and we show her we had the king of spades keep our opponents wondering what the other card was all right moving on to pocket deuces here we're in the straddle the middle position player limps cutoff makes a 15 and the button and small blind put in the call we are absolutely going to go set mining here so i stick in the call and the middle position does as well pot's big we just need to see a deuce on the flop but unfortunately, this time, we don't get our wish. Jack, 5-3, rainbow. It's pretty hard to play pocket deuces unless you flop a set. So when the small blind checks, I check and the action. Fortunately, checks around. So maybe we could find a little bit of hope on the turn. And we do. It's the deuce of clubs. We turn bottom set. I literally cannot make this up, dude. This is the sickest run I've ever been on in my life. The small blind now puts out a bet of $20. Don't really feel like slow playing here. There's definitely a bunch of hands we can get value from. Straight draws, a jack, maybe a hand like pocket sixes. So I put in a raise to $60. And the small blind decides to put in 40 more. So we're going to go off to a river card. River now is the jack of diamonds. It's a pretty good card for us to get value from. Obviously, if they have a jack, they're never going to be folding. They had a hand like a five or pocket sixes. Now that card is going to make it less likely for us to have a jack. So it'll probably induce a few more hero calls. When they check it over to me, they only have about $140 left in their stack. Sitting with bottom set here, we are going to put all of our chips in the middle. $140 effective. That's what I do. But unfortunately, they quickly find the muck. We flip over the ducks to the table. Let them know how hot we're running, dude. We still got a couple more hands to go over here. We have queen ten of hearts in the small blind. The middle position player limps. There's a $5 straddle on the button. I raise it up to $30 and we get looked up by the middle position player and the button. So we're going to go three ways to a flop out of position, which is pretty good. Doesn't give us a pair, but we're open-ended to the nuts. Jack nine, four rainbow with a heart, pretty decent flop for our hand here. We also have the backdoor flush draw to go along, but out of position to two opponents, I'm going to do a lot of checking. So that's what I do in this spot. And we're going to get to see a turn card when the action checks around. The turn now comes the three of spades. It's an absolute brick. I don't think either player would check a jack on the flop. But still, I decide to see what my opponents are going to do. And I start with a check here on the turn. The middle position player checks. And now the action's on the button. He does not decide to check. 
he bets out for $30. Now, the button especially, I would expect to bet a jack on the flop. So when he bets out for $30 here, it seems like he's going to have a weak draw, maybe a 9 or a lower pocket pair like 8s or 7s. It doesn't seem like he's going to have a very strong hand here. And I know my story doesn't really make too much sense if I were to go for a race here, but I'm going to use an exploitative line because I don't think players are calling down enough with a 9 or like pocket 7s. And maybe sometimes we can do this with pocket jacks and pocket 9s, but most of the time I'd probably bet the turn with those hands. Also, I like bluffing with this hand because if we get called, again, we're open-ended to the nuts here. Any king or 8 would give us the best possible hand on this board, as long as it's not a spade. So we're going to get a little bit crazy here. We raise it up to $105. The middle position player folds like I would expect. And now the action's on the button. They go into the tank for two or three minutes here before deciding to muck their cards. We get it through, and they show us that they had pocket eights. One of the hands I was expecting them to have, so really nice to get that one to fold. And we're going to take this one down with pure aggression. Now, there's two more hands to go over here, and they are pretty wild. Not what you're expecting, I promise. We have king jack offsuit and the small blind. There's one limp, and I raised it up to $25. Now, a guy that just rebought decides to stick all $200 of his stack in the middle, and this guy looks mega tilted. You know when you can just tell that somebody's just like throwing money around? Like he, I don't even know if he looked at his cards in this spot. The limper folds and the action is to me. I really feel like I have the best hand here. King Jack, this dude seems mega tilted, bro. So we're gonna stick in the chips. I put in the call, $413 in the middle, and we're gonna go off to a run out here. The flop comes 5-3 deuce with two hearts. Pretty terrible for us. Turn card is the 10 of hearts, giving us a king high flush draw. The river card is the 8 of spades, leaving us with king high. The opponent quickly shows us that he flopped two pair with 5 deuce offsuit. So, exactly what I was expecting to see. The 5 deuce off put $200 in the middle. Like I said, he was tilted. We made the right call, but what a flop for that guy. Nice hand, man. But we are not done with this guy yet. The very next hand. We're on the button straddle. I'm going to blur my hand because I don't want you to see it yet. We're on the button straddle, and he's in the small blind. It folds to him. Sure enough, he puts $413 in the middle, and the action folds to me, and we look down at pocket aces. Are you kidding me? The blind jam, we have aces on the button straddle. Obviously calling here. A little bit of revenge on this guy for drilling the flop in the last hand. Hopefully we can hold this time. We're going to a run out. $816 pot, and the dude, I don't even know if he looked at his cards. The flop comes king, nine, five, rainbow. Turn card, jack of hearts, river card, seven of hearts. And he shows us a king before mucking his cards. Pretty wild to wake up with aces on the button straddle. And basically a blind all in for 400. Seems like a pretty good spot to end the night. The run good is probably gone after that one. But I can't complain because I'm cashing my biggest win ever. Insane. Our stack is looking beautiful, man. We were into that game for 500 and out for $2,470. That's my biggest win ever for $1,970. This trip to Dallas is going absolutely incredible. I have a few more days here, and let me tell you, the sessions are bananas. So stick around, click that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next one.